Good morning. Hope you're having a great day. So glad that we are part of it on this beautiful morning. The weekend is almost here. We'll have some big ideas for you tomorrow on how you can prepare to celebrate as the weekend comes our way. But this morning, we're going to kick the show off with a conversation that probably is very appropriate for a lot of you here in the Chattanooga area because, as you know, this part of the country, uh, well known, they sometimes will reference us as the stroke belt. We have a high level of stroke in the Tennessee Valley and this morning we're thrilled to have Charlotte Purcell. She is with Siskin Hospital for Rehabilitation. Nice to see you this morning. Good morning. So beyond the obvious knowledge that I think most of us have about the risks associated with stroke and what can sometimes be a difficult journey after a stroke, you are actively right now looking for participants in a new study to focus on a lesser known but very concerning side effect of a stroke in adults called apraxia. Is that right? That's correct, yes. So for people who might not be familiar with apraxia, and I will tell you, I was a little bit surprised to learn that this can be the result of stroke. I've thought of it being more as an issue that comes at birth that can affect children. Explain what apraxia is and how someone can know if they're struggling with it. Sure, yes. Um, apraxia of speech is a lesser known communication impairment, um, but it often co-occurs with aphasia, which people may have heard of or even experienced a little bit more frequently uh, following a stroke or a brain injury. So apraxia of speech is a neurogenic motor speech disorder that affects the person's ability to accurately produce or repeat sounds for words. It can also affect the fluency or rate of speech. So it occurs when messages from the brain to the mouth are disrupted and the person can't move his lips or tongue to the right place to say the sounds correctly, even if the muscles aren't weak. So forgive me for maybe missing something here, but is it often what people think of when you know of somebody who's had a stroke is that maybe you have paralysis on one side of your body and that affects your speech. Are we talking about something different from that? We are a little bit. So some there is a motor speech disorder called dysarthria as well and sometimes that's what people would think of with the weakness on one side of your body it can affect the sounds for speech as well. But that is more related to weakness on one side versus a difficulty with sequencing the sounds. So um, apraxia is often related, just like aphasia, to a stroke on the left side of someone's brain. So is this something, and within your study, which I want to get to in just a minute, uh, that only is a result of a stroke related brain injury or let's say that you've been in a car accident or maybe you spiked an incredibly high fever something that caused a brain injury by some other means can apraxia result from that too yes um, brain injury or um, perhaps a brain tumor could certainly uh, cause an apraxia of speech as well okay so with the study that you're currently conducting at Siskin are you only able to take patients who have had a stroke or if you've had any brain injury? I'm actually accepting anybody who's had a brain injury who has a praxia of speech, um, brain injury or stroke. Uh, stroke is the most common cause of a praxia of speech, so sometimes we, we use that as the most likely candidate. Gotcha. Okay, so then tell me about the study. What are you doing exactly and what's involved for the candidates who want to participate? Sure. The, the study essentially compares two different treatment strategies and cueing structures to determine if one strategy works better than another or is more efficient. One of the good things about the study is both of the treatments that I'm using have um, had some positive effects in the literature. So my goal is really to compare the treatments to improve upon clinical decision making. So the benefits from the treatments can't be guaranteed. Um, but it, it's really a study that uses two different therapies and compares the efficiency of each of them. Okay, so let's say that, that four people come into your study. You're saying that two are going to get one type of therapy and two are going to get another type of therapy, and you're looking to see which one gets the more quick results? Actually, all four, in that scenario, all four per 
participants would get both treatments and oh. then pairing within subject. So um, the comparison is then going to be different different sounds and um, whole word accuracy, so intelligibility. Okay, so that means that there's no risk to them because it's not as if they're gonna get lucky to be put in one group over the other, they're just gonna get both throughout yep. the duration. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, I like the design because I, either way, we're getting lots of therapy in. I like that too, okay, so then um, how, I mean, I'm sure there are people watching thinking, well, I had a stroke you know, two years ago and I've been struggling with this. Could they participate in this study? Yes, actually I'm looking for persons between 21 to 90 years old who've, been, who've experienced a stroke or brain injury six months ago or longer uh, and have the diagnosis of apraxia of speech. But you may or may not know that you have the diagnosis of apraxia of speech. Um, so there, if there are interested persons who are unsure of their diagnosis, you can certainly reach out to me and contact me for more information or do some screening questions. Okay, so then with the study itself, how long lasting is it? What's their time commitment? So the study is, is lengthy because of the two treatments. Um, we meet together for, and I'm, I'm going to go broadly um, because it's different from, from week to week at times. But most of the time when we will meet three times a week for 16 to 20 weeks. Okay, but there's no, um, that, so the time commitment is there. Now, will they come with a, a family member if they're not able to drive themselves or have difficulty getting there? Can support come? Yes, certainly. Okay, so the best thing I need to do is encourage people, if they're interested, simply to contact you there at Siskin. Is that right? That's right, yeah. So if they call 634-1400 or they can go online to siskinrehab.org, will there be a tab where they can find their way to you? I would actually provide um, my direct line um, so all of those calls can come towards me. Okay, um, and that's going to be the 634-1656? You got it. That's the number then to write down, 634-1656. Her number is Charlotte Purcell. If you're interested in being part of this study, it's a chance for you to have no risk to you, uh, and you could end the time with her, not only helping her for future patients, but feeling a lot better yourself. Charlotte, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Can you conquer the mountain? Soaky Mountain Water Park in Sevierville is open, and Channel 3 wants you to win passes for a family of four. Grand prize in